Good morning, hacksters. It's Tuesday, my favorite day of the week. Another hackster cafe. Um, subscribe if you like these. <laughs> Today's guest is Sarah Mastin, who is an amazing person. I've been waiting to interview you for a long time. And also, I'm about to get to see you talk a lot more, and we'll cover that later. But um, first up, you are uh, an inventor and the founder of Microsoft's Project 15. Can you tell us about that? I am. Um, yeah, Project 15 from from Microsoft. Is it easier if I if I share uh, a deck with you sure. a little bit to kind of give an, an overview to to those that may not know what that is? Um, totally. I thought on. that those slides were really interesting, especially like, oh, man. Well, you'll all right. see it in just a moment. Now, now's the part of the show where you watch me try to use PowerPoint and <laughs> share. So, um, but I'm Sarah Mastin. I'm a solution architect. I've been doing database uh, solutions, data solutions, then moved into IoT solutions, really from you know a, a data side, um, and then learning that hardware side over the past few years. Um, I know a lot of people are coming from an embedded uh, engineer side and mo learn maybe learning the data uh, side. Um, and I, I do all sorts of things. And um, so I, I founded a project that uh, really resonated. And now I'm trying to figure out how to share just mm -hmm. to uh, be totally transparent about my ability to share. All right. So mm -hmm. let me let me grab the, the deck. All right. Here we go. Um, Alex, Sweet. if you want to dance while I'm um, tell me if you can see this. We got it. Okay. Hold in. All right. Excellent. Um, so Project 15 from Microsoft uh, is really a project that started out with a hypothesis that we, the technical community, with no conservation experience to speak of, except being very concerned humans on this planet that we live on, um, have skills that can help solve problems that we face as a planet. And it, it really started... Um, because I met somebody named Eric Dinnerstein. Uh, and Dr. Dinnerstein, he has an NGO called Resolve and a solution called TrailGuard. And so three and a half years ago, I was connected to him uh, through Friends of Friends because he was trying to build a holistic IoT solution platform, which will not sound foreign to anyone listening probably, and mm. had some questions about how to connect his device up, how to do X, Y, and Z. And the device was a smart camera which would stop poachers before they kill. You know, it's just running an ML model that can, you know, do object rec recognition, classification. There really was no difference between, you know, his solution and something we might see in a smart retail solution or a hospital um, looking for things. Um, but the thing was, is that I realized really quickly that he was reinventing some wheels that mm. maybe a, a commercial a set of folks or a solution might get more, um, you know, resources or have more connection to resources. So this became, I released a video um, once I pitched it uh, around Microsoft and people were very excited to help. We put out a first video, which I don't have to play right now, um, but you can, I think Alex is sharing the video that really said, you know, how can we help? Because the grant money is a very you know small source of funding if you think about it, and we don't want you to waste grant money if we already know how to do this stuff. But once I started learning more and more use cases, because people did call and and join us when we put out that that video, and we got a first call was a startup called Zambezi Partners, and the second call was the Red Panda Network, and the third call was a woman uh, named Yoko Watanabe, and she's the uh, global manager for the GEF small grants program, which is implemented by the United Nations development program. And she mm. said, how can you help us um, scale and, you know, do all sorts of, you know, get these projects to keep going. I'm going to talk a little bit more about her and her group in a minute, but I started taking notes. So scientific projects fall into some common roadblocks. And uh, one of them was the pit of financial despair. Um, which was the first thing I knew, but the catch 22, I know what to do with data. I have many degrees. I know how to do really cool ML stuff, but how do I make a new model? How do I manage the model? You know, et cetera. Um, you maybe I'm making about these specific roadblocks, right? I did. I put this together because there's actually slides probably in every company that does this stuff where 
these are common problems for commercial solutions. And that's really the, the I guess maybe the theme is realizing that there's no difference in these solutions at their core. Mm. And so we really can help them. Um, you know, I may, I know how to make a device, but then cloud what? I don't know how to do a whole solution. <laughs> maybe I'm a small fish. I don't know how to get grant data or something like a really small startup story, right? Um, or how about some big company just kind of took it as a showcase, but then the project kind of died on the vine after the event was over. Um, and then there's a the scale out. How do I scale my solution to be global? And so we made a platform. Um, you know, my colleague Daisuke and I sat there going, well, how are we going to deal with this? We're just two people at Microsoft. We're just hanging out, uh, doing this in our spare time. We, we both have sort of day jobs, if you will. And how can we help accelerate all these different folks where 80% is the same as a connected refrigerator? Um, well, let's let's make a platform and put it on GitHub. And so we did. Mm -hmm. um, Dice K wrote this very, very quickly. And uh, it actually took more time for us to make the PowerPoint to talk about it. Um, <laughs> probably, you know, the case of many people like, oh, yeah, boom, boom, boom. All right. Now, how do we talk about it? So this is what it looks like. You can go out and spin it up. You'll get all the Azure IoT innards to build, you know, most any connected solution, if I'm being frank. Um, and so we used this to scale with our partners and friends of Project 15 so they could go quickly. And within a year of launching the project, we were actually honored to be featured in the UNDP's annual report um, with our work with the Small Grants Program, um, which is uh, still processing it. But we made lots of friends. We started with Resolve and we grew um, the, an ecosystem of friends and, and partners. And you'll see Edge Impulse up here and Seed. So we have a very, very vast spectrum of partners from the park to technology. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so that's, to, that's that's what we did. <laughs> wonderful. There's a, a quick technical note here where I'm not sure that your slides are advancing because you were talking about uh -oh. the different roadblocks and stuff, but uh, we seem to be stuck on the Didn't first slide with stuck? Project 15 from Microsoft and the elephant. Oh, uh, well. I'll share my slides later if that's helpful. Okay, cool. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but just, yeah, it, they're really fascinating. And uh, oh, that's so weird. I wonder why it wasn't updating. That's um, strange. Yeah, but maybe what I can actually was it just it. me waving my arms around because that no I was I was showing the slide but it was just the the starting project 15 one um huh. let me see if I can uh maybe try and get this into the browser so that I can show people because honestly it's it's really useful to be able to see this stuff um it's a lot and it's a lot. and it's gorgeous like I think it's a, a really nice presentation um let me We've, see Firefox uh... can you handle this no but uh We'll share this later. It's it's funny when you say, oh, the slides are really nice. Like um, that's kind of the spirit of the whole project, especially at Microsoft. People, different people with different skills have come in, um, design skills, um, you know, whatever. And that's really, that's the spirit of it is you have skills that can help these types of projects. Um, and, and, you know, it's been really overwhelming. Like I have a hard time to to stop and then look back and then realize it's only been three years that that this that project kicked off. Um, some of the stuff mm. I do currently is is an evolution of that, um, but it's it's been really phenomenal. Um, and the learnings, you know, to sit here, I could tell you all sorts of interesting things about you know different animals, different systems, etc. At this point, if if you ask um, or, or if you want to meet someone who knows how to do X, Y, and Z, um, because it really became um, a community of, of people with different skills and breaking down the silos between us, um, like any data problem, right? Like, yeah, that's, that's the thing. How do you connect the data from different systems to solve bigger problems? And with our sort of a social graph, if you will, um, we started to do that. I may not know the answer, but I'm sure I can go find someone that will know or be able to help you um, better anyway. So, yeah. 
Yeah, I'm I'm just pulling up these. We're playing images. with the cameras. <laughs> we are absolutely keep waving my <laughs> arms. But around. I saw your cat come through. Uh, what is your cat oh. name? Oh, that's um, okay. So that's Thomas, uh, whose full name is Thomas, who is also a girl, because uh -huh. she's named she's named after Thomas the first, whose full name was Thomas, who is a girl. Um, oh. And uh, it's very long story, but we call her Floof because she uh -huh. turned in to be very floofy. Um, <laughs> and uh, you know, this aside, it's uh, for anyone who didn't who didn't know they'd come and learn about my cat today. Well, now you know. Um, oh, yeah. And actually, I just uh, was uh, given a kitten last night. So Yay! yeah, so we have a new new baby in the house who's not here. But um, anyway, I'll post on Twitter. There, there That's you very go. exciting. <laughs> so just to get everyone oriented, this is Sarah Messon's Twitter page. You should totally go follow it. And uh, those, I just, I really want to show you uh, ah, these word blocks. Our They're so beautifully laid out. And it makes, I, I feel like it really helped me sort of orient myself to what your goals are as a project. And so, you know, you talked about the Catch-22, where people are trying to get funding, trying to get grants. And uh, they can't get it because they don't have the data yet. But then, like, in order to get the data, you got to get a grant. And then uh, the small fish part where, you know, you're trying to get a lot of small independent people trying to, to, to solve these big problems. Um, but again, they need to get that data first. <laughs> the pit of financial despair you mentioned. Uh, and then also, you know, the showcase part, which is something that we try to combat very actively as well at Hackster, which is where something is built to be a research paper, or in our case, maybe like a contest submission, uh, but not necessarily a lasting solution. And uh, one thing that I love about our partnership with the IoT into the Wild contest that's happening now with Seed Studio and also the previous one, um, the Elephant Edge contest with Edge Impulse and Smart Parks, oh, is that um, they're really Amazing. designed to, yeah, and they're designed to go into the real world and, and help stuff out. Like for, there's video now of uh, Tim Van Dam going and putting a collar on an elephant in a uh, national park and, uh, you know, them releasing it with this team. Uh, obviously like with a team of rangers and everything and it's just an amazing uh collaboration that's like it's it's happening you know it it's like that happening. Of the guy, it's happening <laughs> it's you know it's interesting um and i think it's in one of my blog things that i shared but i actually kind of had to try not to well up on stage i was oh. I, actually the imagine uh, edge impulse imagine conference is happening uh this week i wasn't mm. able to go this year boo um but it's a great great conference um i think it's definitely virtual um and that's where we announced uh last year i was on stage with adam uh, benzian and we brought up you know we had the caller there and he shared that um my name was uh put on the board and so I, I had to, you know, keep it together to be very, oh, my God, my name is etched on a board that's walking around on some matriarch somewhere, um, oh, which is I'm, I'm very overwhelming. <laughs> like, it's a, oh. it's a strange Easter egg um, to, to, to kind of speak to. I, I use that example because one of the big problems in conservation tech um, was that my name, it's, you know, it's remarkable that my name's on that board um i think it says for the it says my name adam's daughter um smart parks for yeah. the love of elephants i think is the inscription uh, and um anyway i'll get all misty now yeah. because it's it's very overwhelming but um there it's so small and niche that that my name can be on a board and we need to change that and we need to get devices mass produced and into the hands of developers um who can use them and that was a big mission by myself and you know co-founder daisuke nakahara where how do you make these plug and play how do you how do you get devices that are certified in azure you don't need the open platform you can hook it into something like iot central or something and so you know you know i just wanted you i was like oh my god the iot in the wild contest so when um eric pun uh, CEO of Seed had reached out to us and said, how can we partner? Um, because he, his company has a global distribution network. They're not, there are elephants that are in India. There are jaguars and big cats everywhere. You know, how do you get these devices more available 
Um, and so, you know, in lower one gateways, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so what seed has done um, is, is I think just remarkable to be the first big design house who has said, you know, we will make a fleet of devices for this use case. Um, whereas maybe a few years ago, you know, this, these use cases weren't, I don't know, they're not seen as, I don't know, uh, as there's no money in it. I have no idea what's the <laughs> commercial model, the business model. And, you know, you're only going to make 8,000 rhino horn trackers. And that's a very small set of devices. Um, but then you have to think that there's only 8,000 rhinos left. So exactly. I yeah. I, you know, um, so this is really encouraging and, and wonderful. And it's not just animals. Um, and many of you uh, listening, maybe you're part of this contest. This is this is incredible. Um, I don't know if you want to talk about that from the hacks or like this is getting it done, you know, um, and coming together to really do it. And three years ago, I don't think I don't think we ever dreamed um, that something like this, uh, you know, coming off of Elephant Edge and then into this um, this hackathon would be a reality. And here it is. So. Um, yeah, and we did a uh, an interview with Eric Penn a couple of months ago where we talked about the new sense cap technology that they have developed for this. It's so cool. And uh, it's so cool. Well, wait, I have um. Here's my. Yes. I have the kit. It comes in Plus a very the, incredible. Their packaging cute, is top notch as always. Is cute a good word to use? Because I just you know it's like it is. amazing. It's amazing. Whoever is the industrial designer for this is you know hats off because this is the coolest. Um, Every time I unbox something from them, I have to gush about how the little sensor modules are packed like little candy pieces in their little plastic wrappers. Don't don't eat them, anybody. Don't, don't eat them. <laughs> they may be chips, but they're not chips. Um, <laughs> but they uh. We've got this uh, page here for the oh, yes. exact uh, kit, the SenseCap K1100 sensor prototype kit with Laura and AI. Laura also getting a lot of attention lately. We just had the Things conference last week. Uh, all these conferences, it's really amazing <laughs> everything happening right now. Uh, I love this little container. It's so cute. Okay, it, enough of that. It, <laughs> it is. No, it's funny. My, um, I have a 10-year-old. If you do go to my Twitter, I like to, just so you know, I like to keep quotes <laughs> that he says to me um, just for later when he doesn't remember. And so um, <laughs> you'll find oh. some some quotes on there. Um, but uh, I was I was going to say um, the the you know, when the soil it has soil and air monitoring and it and I told him about this kit. And I said, oh, we can do you know, we can play with this and build something. And I said, you know, we're in the middle of the drought and I live outside of Seattle and and he and he goes, it's hot and the soil is dry and i'm like okay that's very true that okay but we're gonna do it you know anyway he's um just so you know he's more of a wants to grow up to be a story writer for video games right now he's less mm. of a coder but um but then you know i did convince him I'm like yeah but with this we can find out how, how hot and how dry and so he, mm. he found that compelling so um you know multi-generational involvement in this has become key um we i want to call out a very special project we did um with the ceo and founder of kids can save animals um called club 15. yes um this i love this show um she she's now 12 just to put this in context she was 10 when she pitched me and wow. if you watch the second uh, project 15 video she is the kid in the video um she meets with a lot of the partners um, oh from, we did this in the pandemic, so they used a lot of B-roll uh, from mm -hmm. before, but um, she meets with a lot of the partners of Project 15, partners and friends. So this goes from learning about, you know, Virginia McKenna, who is one of the, um, she's the founder of the Born Free Foundation, which is a, a person who is behind the reason we no longer have uh, animals in the circus being mistreated. Mm. Um, the The job isn't over uh, for for getting these animals out of zoos and um, unhealthy quarters, um, but that 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 interview is incredibly special because she's been doing it for 55 years, and so you can come and learn things. She has 
Eric Dinnerstein um, talks to her not only about trail guard, but other points in his career. So if you're looking mm. for a primer on the use cases in conservation, um, this is a great place to go. You're going to see a lot of familiar names as you keep going. Um, you know, Yoko, uh, who yeah. I mentioned, Adam. Um, mm-hmm. And yeah, so, Yoko. yeah, no, this is a great show. We've got uh, AI for Earth came on, Sheldrick okay. Wildlife mm-hmm. Trust. Um, and then, um, yeah, I, this is this is probably one of the most interesting partnerships I've ever had in my career because she wanted to match education and advocacy for a younger generation, though many adults watch this, um, mm-hmm. and then do a lab. So she partnered with our developer advocacy group at Microsoft and produced a custom vision lab to get people going. Um, it's remarkable. Um, and this is one of the really great parts of Project 15 and the community that we have around it is you know, you're going to see people on that, that you will see on the, um, you know, IOT in the wild uh, hackathon is judges. So you'll see boss uh, who is one of the founders of Zambezi partners. He is in the second video as well. He's the gentleman with the Mm. beard um, as he's known in some circle, the guy with the beard. So you (laughs) see him, but you can go and learn from him and Jenna, who are the founders of Zambezi partners, what they're doing on club 15. So we, we were able to build this sort of, just community of, of technologists and friends um, that can can help educate and just bring people in um, to what we're doing and how we can apply our skills and and get going on this until there are huge companies that you know have a vertical you know the industry of conservation if you will that are really focused on this um, etc so it's really it's some... amazing what's happened. Yeah. And there's some really amazing submissions to this contest, by the way, as well. This is the IoT into the Wild contest, which for which submissions close tonight. Actually, you've got about 13 or 14 hours left to submit your projects if you have hardware and you've built a project uh, to win this contest. But there's some really cool uh, submissions in here. All kinds of different applications, frost monitoring to trail conservation to uh, ocean science, food spoilage, flood and landslide. All this, the I think that a huge thing that comes through about uh, not only the IoT into the wild contest, but also everything that you're doing with Project Fifteen, um, you know, this open platform, um, you know, this could be used for all kinds of conservation projects. And you have, uh, I forget where it was exactly, but I think I was watching a video or reading an article with you, and you were talking about how um, you had heard at first like part of your inspiration for project 15 was uh and the way that the place the name comes from was uh hearing the statistic that like every 15 minutes an elephant was dying and but also that you sort of turned that around into this thing of like take 15 minutes and think about what you're passionate about what you're working on and how that can relate to any of the world's problems and just take 15 minutes and like no matter what you're interested in like it could and that sort of uh relates to your journey as well no, totally. Um, yes, it is a horrific fact that every 15 minutes, like during the course of this talk, we'll lose, you know, three elephants from the planet. And we don't lose them, right? They are poached. Mm. Um, they. This isn't like, oops, we lost the animals. This is, mm. this is a dark sort of story when you get to the other side of it. Um, but the reality is we lose a rhino every eight hours and I had already mentioned there's about 8,000 left, um, I think. I don't quote me because I don't know the exact <laughs> number, but it's it's finite, unfortunately. And um, although I've met so many amazing people that are working on, you know, like Care for Wild and rehabilitation and you know, all sorts of stuff is going on to boost these numbers. Pangolins, we lose one every five minutes is the statistic. That's the wow. most um, trafficked animal in the world. Um, and it is, it is really, um, I came in thinking, God, how dark and, you know, it's a very depressing if you only focus on sort of one thing about it, right? Oh, this is, yes, you can go learn about pangolin tagging uh, with Kate. This is that she's holding a pangolin. Um, they are poached for their scales um, mm. and uh, which are made out of fingernail. They're keratin, like they're made oh. out of the same material as fingernails so it doesn't make 
much sense. Um, but here, here we are. Um, they can be tagged now and um, better, better tracking to help save them. Um, but yeah, 15. So that was project 15. It was a serious name for a serious project to change that number um, mm. till you couldn't uh, count it. And it really, I come from a commercial space. I made data warehouses in the world, um, you know, did a lot of work. I have a sort of a clinical background. I was the data architect for Boston Medical Center and um, I've done some other work around um, which I don't know if you have this on your tabs. You have so many tabs up. Um, oh, it's but I, around nutrition and yes, I do have that tab. Oh, uh, so <laughs> but but it's really um, it's interesting because I this whole thing happened because I was working on a solution called Project Edison at the time I met Eric, mm -hmm. and um, and so Eric, you know. It was a safety solution. I built a solution accelerator with a partner at Microsoft and we were going around the world talking about safety that used IoT devices to speak and communicate more effectively in an emergency for those experiencing the crisis. And it could be, you know, a, a mental wellness crisis and it could be, um, you know, a, a fire. It could be, it could be anything, but to build better systems so that those in the middle of it were less confused and it was less stressful for everyone involved. And that was because there was a fire with my building in Redmond when I moved there oh. and I re ran in to rescue my cat. And um, so that it really all starts with Thomas the first. So <sighs> then you apply that to elephants and that's how you get from my cat to elephants. And, and it doesn't seem to make sense until you bubble it down to say, oh, they're just devices. They're sending information yeah. and then you're going to do something with it. How can I help you? Um, and that's, you don't have to know about all the particulars of elephants to go help design better systems to help them, is the point. Um, and and that was really how it started. And then, you know, in the same vein, because I, you flashed up my, I'm, I'm on a patent. Um, mm -hmm. And once upon a time, um, I designed something called the nutrition graph, which was applying graph theory to uh, pathophysiology of digestion. Um, which I studied for a very long time um, to map yeah. food to disease through phytochemicals in your body. So I use the beet and there's a lot of people on this um, world that probably don't, whenever they see a beet, they think of me. Huh? Um, but this project is an example of everything we're talking about. So I spent 12 years studying all the medical background, you know, that, stuff all of that to come up with something you know your liver is complicated but it turns out to be eight nodes um to connect food to disease and and the reactions in your body so um i use this picture to show the power and you know caution because you know you see beets are connected to lessening tumor growth in many cancers through yeah tenon. however if you threw a beet in and you thought, well, I'll just throw these greens in too, because they're probably good for me, and you happen to have kidney problems, um, they're actually oxalates in the beet greens are linked to um, uh -huh. having some kidney stone problems. So you want it, this is to show the power of food, um, which can go kind of both ways. So I studied this for a long time, and then I met a developer when I was at IBM and uh, his name was Mike Ellsmore. And I meet him and I, and I tell him about this. Now, he doesn't know anything about the medical part of this, but he's an incredible developer. So I used to, people would say, how long did it take you to invent that? And I say, well, 12 years of research and study and drawing my crazy pictures, mm -hmm. and then eight hours. Because once I met the right developer, he pretty much built a POC about it on a plane ride home from a conference back wow. in England. And so this is the same where somebody's out there and they have a project and they're trying to do something and all they need to do is meet that right developer, right? Like yeah. meet the right person that can just fix it for them and then off you go. So, so I have met so many people that do that, right? There. No, no. Yeah. But like Stephanie, um, why, uh, wild labs, is a, is a great place if you're interested in getting involved, um, wildlabs.net. Um, and so connecting developers with, with these, and I didn't 
you know, meet her until, or learn about Wild Labs till I went on my Project 15 journey and said, oh my God, look, this is here. So, so this is incredible. This is a way to um, connect and, and get things done. Uh, so if you haven't signed up for this uh, organization, um, highly recommend. They do learnings, they do trainings on both sides. Um, really, really, really interesting. And more IoT stuff, uh, Sigfox over here, uh, anyone who's got an interest already in uh, embedded stuff and IoT, all kinds of different stuff. You can apply those passions to uh, the stuff that we all care about in terms of fixing the world. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's really, the, there's so much opportunity once you, I guess, I mean, it's always connecting dots, right? Like I just right. needed to find out which uh, club to go to in high school. And then I met my people and we did stuff, whether it's chess or coding <laughs> or D and D, like it could be anything. And so that's, I mean, my own personal discovery was, you know, yeah, I put it out there to say, I don't know anything about this with my friends, you know, a very small group of friends in the beginning. We don't know anything about this, but we'd like to help. And by the time you get the second video, which is like two years in, a year ago, we released the second video, you know, we have very special guests in that video that says, not only do we want some help, we'd love some help and let's go figure it out together because there's so many problems to solve out there. Absolutely. And uh, I want to show uh, with the elephant edge contest that we talked about a moment ago, um, you know, these ones that are, are smart collars to keep uh, elephants safe and track them so that they can be protected. Uh, one of these projects that I really like, uh, this one is the collars and gateways. Um, but they talk about all the different types of applications that this same tech could be applied to, which I feel is sort of something we keep coming back to here that like, you, know, you build a central framework, it takes away roadblocks for people who don't have the inherent skills to build IoT stuff, or they uh, might have some skill, but they need some help ramping up and that eats up grant money and that takes up time that, uh, you know, they're, they need to actually solve the problem rather than getting, spending all that time and money just to solve the technical um, questions that they're trying to solve. And then once you have that, though, which is what you've been building, uh, it can be applied to farmlands uh, with crop rating. You, you can, uh, even just in the case of elephants, there's all these different things that you can apply it to. And then we get into other stuff, which uh, I think we're going to talk about your work with trafficking later on. But um, yeah. Just... Oh, here comes Thomas. Ah, she likes so... to video. Oh. video so, you know, here, come say hello. Tail. There's Fluffy. <laughs> oh. She's very floofy. Um, Anyway, um, no, it's true. Repeatability and scalability. And that's, that's, a, mm. I mean, these are commercial ideas. And the, the trick to this, um, I don't know if that's the right wor wording, but the trick to it was, is applying the exact same stuff that at Microsoft, we do with commercial partners and customers. Uh, we call it an ADS session, an architectural design session where you go and mm. you meet someone and, and in the beginning of IoT, a lot of uh, embedded, you know, sort of on the device side, didn't know how to build cloud, holistic cloud solutions, which, you know, I, I got hired to come in and help do that in the sort of the beginning of that uh, motion and movement and scale movement. So it's really something that we're used to, to say, this is someone who builds devices. They don't know anything about this database or that database or whatever. Um, so architects from Microsoft come in and meet and have a day long session and whiteboard. And then at the end of it, here is an architecture of what this looks like on Azure. Um, mm. All of those reference architectures, for the most part, there's many of them are up and you can find them now. They're all over the place. So this, this, is, this is a very common pattern. This is just, um, you know, it's things. It's, it's insights, collecting the data, and then it's actions, doing things, having an app that does something or sending a notification or pushing it back down. There is no magic in that, um, I don't think. Um, I love except, that. Except my colleague, Daisuke, is such a wizard that he makes this spin up in under 10 minutes. So there are wow. commercial partners um, 
who have taken this and and used it and just said, yeah, I know there's a story on top of it because you're 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 you know working with the the folks at the UNDP and and different organizations there to scale in to educate them to say, hey, you don't have to learn all of this. Um, you can you can just um, you can just take this, and now it's like a car, or you know, as Dice Case says in the second video, it's a piano. They don't want to build a piano. You don't need to spend six months to learn about <laughs> IoT Hub and how to connect these things. No, don't worry about it. Just push this button, it sets up, and then off you go. And so I use an analogy a lot about a word processor. Mm. Like this is, you know, an IoT based solution to 80%, 90% is the same. It's the author that then turns it into a resume, a list, mm -hmm. or you write a novel. But at the core, it's a word processor. And if you had to build a typewriter every single time you wanted to write a book, <laughs> we would have problems like in this world that, that I, I don't, I even have the typewriter Lego up there, but um, <laughs> I was like, oh, that's probably why. Um, but anyway, the, uh, it's just, the piano how can analogy. we help? Yeah. We help. The piano analogy also reminds me of the concept of, you know, there's free as in lunch, free as in beer. And then there's a third one I've heard of, which is free as in piano, uh, which is like, yes, it's free, but you've got to figure out how to get it out of their house and like up your stairs and get oh. it tuned. And, <laughs> and I feel like it's a very apt uh, analogy that uh, you said Daisuke uses this as an uh, he does. analogy, which, you know, they want to write songs. There, like, they yeah, and you're, build and you're pianos. setting up the piano, but you're making it easier. Uh, yeah. And uh, you know, all this, they don't have to set up the piano themselves. They can take a framework for a piano and kind of deploy it uh, with, as you say in the documentation, the click of a button. You know, it's not yeah. like you have to lug it up the stairs and find a place and tune it and everything. You just click the button and deploy it to your account. Is that right? It's true. And I've had, I've done, um, I don't know if, uh, I think I saw a comment come through. So Pete, um, Pete Gallagher uh, had me on his, web, his, uh, oh, there you are. Um, he, how the puppies are. <laughs> how the, oh yeah. I have, I have two dogs. Um, I have a little zoo here. Um, so Pete, he put me on his, um, his, he has a, corner of the internet where he brings people to talk about stuff and his user group i don't know what the right words are. i'm totally blanking because i'm so hip and cool that i'm blanking Ooh. on it but what he did when i came there the first time is he spun up the open platform while i was talking and i'm sitting there thinking like oh yeah no this will work this will work and then he comes in 10 minutes later and he's like oh no this worked yeah oh wow okay it's spun up yeah and i'm like well, yes. Okay, good. But it was stressful, you know, because we all know about the live demo. Um, so, oh, uh, you yeah. know, uh, but yeah, you you push the button, you add, we've tried to make it, um, you know, simple in the sense that you're going to put in your, you know, your credentials, et cetera, et cetera. But it should just go. And then a year, oh God, I can't, I've lost total track of time in the pandemic, but about, um, I want to say a year and a half ago, Azure Digital Twins became graph-based. And mm. as I've already told you, I like graphs. Um, mm -hmm. And when I started Project 15, I, I started kind of two projects. And one of them was in public. And one of them was a side project uh, behind the scenes working with my justice peers at Microsoft to say, hey, you know, I think I can, I can help uh, apply graph theory. Um, to break down the silos uh, to maybe help with this trafficking problem. And yeah. so um, so when Azure Digital Twins became graph-based, uh, graph I said, oh, can we put a flag to Daisuke? And he went, sure. And so he wrote it into the script that you can either spin up sort of the traditional, you know, Azure IoT uh, bits and pieces of services connected together, or you can go in and say, oh, I'd like the Azure Digital Twins version, which will give you all that plus mm. here's Digital Twins on top of it. Um, and then many people listening might be doing a lot of smart now that we live in sort of three years from the start of when I, my journey in sustainability, there's act things going on with smart energy and so, um, 
you know, having a digital twin of a building and, a, and making a smart building or a factory is a, is a really big use case for Azure Digital Twins. Mm. Um, yeah. So last year I applied it to um, animal uh, management and, and started working with the product group on our company hackathon. Uh, ah. which we have at, at Microsoft. Um, yeah. And so, oh, there's there's Elephant Edge oh. again. Oh, yes. oh, love mm -hmm. it. Um, but you're talking about animals and uh, uh, and the data, so. Okay. Yeah. Well, oh, no, I, you know, every year I try to do one of these, like, here's what's been going on with Project 15. Yeah, um, this is your 2021 update. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, it's it's a lot. Um, it's, it's, uh, it's really cool. Oh, yeah. But if you go down, you'll get into... Um, I had written a thought piece. Oh, there's the tracker. Um, a, yeah. I had written a, a thought piece about applying graph theory to sustainability. Mm. And so this was putting that in practice. Um, and so, ah, there it is. And Please. I'm sure I, some of my arrows might be wrong. I always have yeah. this little, that arrow is wrong, Sarah. I'm not I'm sure like, it'll oh, give us the whole picture anyway, but. No, no, it won't. That's that's probably by design. Um, so. <laughs> I, the um, so essentially you can okay so here's the two sides right so the park side systems and then you have justice side systems and in between is where all sorts of nefarious activities happen mm. in the middle but there's a professor um, his name's Dr. Sam Wasser and he's at the University of Washington and he's the world's expert on tracing the DNA back to the families of the the elephants and rhinos, et cetera. Oh, there he is. Wow. And so when I started working with Eric on the conservation device tech side as a mentor, I also started learning from uh, Dr. Wasser. And so um, this, you know, what you start to get into what I do now around this is applying, um, you know, graph uh, technologies into how to oh yes and that's not my last name but i did work as a help desk oh. <laughs> and my first tech job at matson so oh, no. hilarious um but um but the shipping containers and you know how that whole process architecture works i've spent a number of years now studying um and it was the focus this work was the focus of this year's hackathon as well which is not, i will talk about in the near future but um Yes, this is what I, I spend my nights and weekends figuring out with a lot of um, justice uh, side friends, which is, it's not an easy topic, but if you think about once the harm event happens on a park, you've got folks that are managing the park and monitoring health. And so like, um, for example, Zambezi Partners is is building systems that do that. Or, and there's many there's many others that I've learned about in that ecosystem, like uh, I think Connected Conservation is the name, um, you know, and then we, of course, we have uh, formerly known as Vulcan Earth Ranger. Um, mm. You have uh, the Paul Allen Institute for AI um, that they've they've become part of. Um, so you've got Earth Ranger doing those kinds of systems of wellness monitoring, um, but once the animal leaves the park you know, or the ele the elephant piece, let's say the tusk, that piece of evidence is going to show up somewhere. So that Sam Wasser's uh, sort of processes that are in the news um, happen. So, so that's a physical piece of evidence where the link is the DNA, not unlike things that happen in the human world, right? Fingerprints, DNA, etc. cetera. Right. Um, so how do you connect the dots um, to A, build better systems for wildlife management that are graph-based so it's no longer, you know, just a collar that sends events and then once the events stop, you put the collar on someone else if it's, uh, you know, if it still works um, and then off you go. And it, But in a graph model, you have an entity that's an animal that is an elephant that is wearing a collar, collar and now you can attach data to that elephant entity for example, and then when something bad happens, you can instantiate, this is me, you can instantiate <laughs> the tusk. And now you have a tusk, which was part of the elephant, which that tusk can show up in another system that's on like a port side. And when you um, take, uh, when you uh, put a collar on each animal, do you take a DNA samples to make 
that uh, identification part easier? That is on the Parkside procedure list. Makes so, um, I mean, it, w it would, uh, you know, if, if that's the flow and um, for health monitoring, et cetera. Um, so conceptually in this like theoretical walkthrough, yes, if you have it on the one side taken while it is alive, you can shorten the time uh, to bring justice um, for that for that animal and then collect evidence uh, more easily because you know Kirk Arthur is who I work with a lot at in, in at work and he is our director of strategy for public sector and justice. He's formerly of the Secret Service. He was actually on Obama's presidential detail and George wow. W. Bush's presidential detail. Um, he's the guy I go to when I talk, want to talk about catching, uh, bad guys. Um, and, oh yeah. And everything I know about things is from queen of the South. Um, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, no, it's, it's an interesting, it's a horrific problem I know to go and try to help with, but I don't know anything about being a secret service agent, right? I don't know anything about, being what it's like to be a fish and wildlife service uh, special agent, let's say, but I do know graph theory and I do know graphs. And so mm -hmm. if I can help, um, because what is Kirk's quote once was the greatest enemy of justice is, uh, is time. And if you shorten mm -hmm. the time um, between, you know, events or you find a way to hijack the timeline to say, hey, we've lost a tusk. And then you have all the ports. It's almost, uh, I've designed, it's in one of these blog posts, but that's what I've been working at. Spoiler alert, been working at mm -hmm. uh, last week was the Darwin alert system. And so it's, um, I talked about it last year, but it's basically building out a way to shorten the, the timeline. And so I'll be publishing yeah. some stuff around that in the next month or two. But um, yeah, everyone has hobbies. That's usually what I say. <laughs> Um, I feel like I've talked a lot. I'm sorry. Um, no, 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 no. That's, it's your show. Um, <laughs> I want to point out while we're here that uh, this this blog post, there's lots of links in the description below. This one is not there yet, but I will put it up there. Uh, so by the time that you're probably watching this, uh, you'll just be able to scroll down and find, I think this is a really fascinating blog post, honestly, um, on Sarah's LinkedIn, and then also this uh, 2021 updates one with all the stuff about anti-trafficking. and. Um, I know that there's a lot that I want to go back and dig through, but there's also this, uh, every time that you mentioned the second video, it's oh. this video, um, the how to be a hero. I believe it's this one, right? Yes. It's uh, aka.ms slash project 15 hero. We shall put it in the, the description also. Uh, not there just yet, but uh, you can also just look up the name of the, oh, of yeah. the video on YouTube, but uh, it's on Microsoft IOTs. Uh, YouTube subscribed. <laughs> um, yeah, we've got just a few more minutes here, and I know that there's a bunch more stuff that I wanted to cover. Uh, but let's see. So we talked about the different contests we've been doing. The Elephant Edge one we did before. The uh, in IoT into the Wild one that's just wrapping up now. We're going to do some judging. You have so some cool. fun times ahead of you as a judge. <laughs> I know. Um, oh, Worth it. Mm. Oh, how can people best get involved? Obviously, the best way in my uh, perception uh, might be just go to the Project 15 website and uh, hit the link to deploy, follow the instructions there. Um, yes. So um, so that's helpful if you're building, you know, you're either building a system or maybe you're, you've partnered up with an NGO that you want to help or um, whatever your motivation, or maybe you're doing something else with Azure IoT and you're like, oh, <laughs> done. Okay, great. Um, that's That also is a great use case um, of using the repo. I would say, um, you know, check out Wild Labs. Um, oh, yeah. You know, like kind of poke around there and, and see. Um, the small grants program uh, that I, I work so closely with um, they also have their projects listed and there's i think there's about 27,000 of them that are listed that wow. they've funded so this really like i know i'm at the end and i'm like this kind of speaks to there is a misconception that um you know sustainability or conservation 
based use case projects or NGOs are not like there's a funding issue or something. Um, I think there's a solution stability issue um, where, you know, these NGOs need help and they need your help who's listening um, to be able to realize what they want to do as a solution and not have it um, stop at the end of the, you know, the small grants program starts out with a 50, I think it's a 50K uh, seed funding round. Um, so think about building POCs, et cetera. Um, and you can kind of, I'll, I'll give you the link to share out after this, but, um, but there's also another opportunity, which I wanted to mention before we go. Um, I'm actually leading a panel discussion at your next yes. uh, event. Spoilers. It's not listed. <laughs> it's not really a spoiler. There. We haven't announced it yet. This is the first time we're talking about it publicly. Sarah's going to be keynoting. It's, on the, it's um, on the internet. It's on the internet. Just go to our um, events page and scroll down and click on the Impact Summit. It's two days. It's free. It's virtual. There's nothing stopping you from coming to join us. Uh, we've even set up the agenda so that uh, people can, you know, if depending on your time zone, if you can only come for part of each day, you know, uh, you'll be able to get a mix of demos and panels and also workshops. We've sort of shuffled them around so that each day has, uh, you know, they're sort of counterbalanced against each other per by time zones. And Sarah's going to be doing so much cool stuff with us. This is going to be cool. Um, there's some other colleagues of mine at Microsoft that are involved and I just, I'm, this is super exciting. Um, but the I'm panel so discussion, I'm, uh, I'm going to be speaking with some guests and you'll get to hear from Yoko Wananabe, who's going to come oh. and talk about the small grants program that she runs and, you know, how, you know, her take on private public partnership um, to get, you know, to move this needle. And she doesn't just fund biodiversity use cases. It's uh, urban sustainability, chemicals, waste, um, all of them, land management. So, so what, again, whatever you are interested in, <laughs> take 15 minutes and go creep the project list. Um, you know, birds and bullies, there's all sorts of stuff going on that I think anyone who wants to get involved um, can, can, can get involved. Yeah, and that's uh, this small grants program that's just loading here uh, from guess. the UN that you're talking about, Yoko. So if you hit projects up on the bar mm -hmm. there, just just tap on projects. It's all public. Um, and this actually is a searchable. Yeah, there's a lot of projects. So she yeah. gave us three to start with as a pilot. Um, and uh, and then it's, you know, I don't know if it, Penguin's going to up. That'll be interesting. Um, but you can you can check it'll give you the ngos what a little like what the project was and that's a good place to start too as well as um connecting cool. into some of the wild lab stuff oh wait look yeah we got, got some stuff. four projects i mean there's twenty five thousand of them this is so cool empowering local tribes that is so wonderful oh yeah so if you want to hear more local? about i mean what the, i mean the problem is you know, anti-poaching, like, you know, now that I work on trying to help with anti-poaching, anti-trafficking, but the reality is, is, you know, these problems are caused by poverty. Nobody starts out saying, I want to do this when I grow up, right? right? Um, and so Yoko and her organization are really one of um, quite possibly the biggest ones that, that are working on projects that raise communities up um, you know, have bring business models. And I've learned about, you know, woman led oyster farms and, you know, all sorts of interesting, just absolutely fascinating um, things that are going on in the world from Barbados to, you know, over in Panama and, and everywhere in between and around the other way. Like, I mean, just so much going on. So that's a good place to go start, um, you know. But this is amazing. Um, and nobody, and who knew I had never heard of her until I met, till, you know, she reached out to me and said, I saw your video. Um, it resonates. Can I, can I meet you and, and with you and Daisuke and my team so you can talk to us about this and try to help us scale. I love it. And, and I said, well, repeatability, you know, <laughs> like that's, that's how we have, we have to get to repeatability so that each one of those grants is not reinventing a wheel. Yeah. And um, so. like you mentioned, you know, there's each one of these roadblocks is someplace where someone can jump in and be like, oh, I can help with that. So Yoko coming in with the grant funding, um, you know, Project 15 with the technical solutions, you know, 
whatever people's expertise, whether they like to talk to people and connect people or, you know, sit alone in a garage and hack on stuff. I'm kind of an introvert. So like I tell you to, I like to be able to con contribute technically, but also like con connecting people, amplifying stuff like you're doing. All these roadblocks are things that uh, people can help with, with whatever their personal expertise is. And uh, yeah, I've got to throw in there before we wrap up. This is a little bit of a non sequitur, but uh, do I remember you saying in one of our, um, you know, group calls with Hackster that uh, you learned IoT on Hackster? Um, yes, actually, um, <laughs> there was a, uh, wow, okay. So yes, there was a Hackster Microsoft enablement type tour back in the day. And I actually, um, I had a, an old, a colleague that I had known for a while um, who was leading it with you. Um, and had been part of the Microsoft IoT team. Um, I, funny enough, I had uh, worked with him at IBM. And so, um, yes, he was giving some sort of tour, education tour, and invited me to go because I was kind of like trying to figure out what to do with my life at the time. He said, please come and learn about this. And so, yes, so I, uh, yeah, that's true that you you guys run incredible oh lessons and it, everything. And then then I learned about Adafruit, you know, and it goes on and on. Oh. Um, but yes. <laughs> I'm so glad we were there at the start of the journey. Um, again, everyone, just to review places that things that you should definitely check out. We'll link all these in the description below. Anything that isn't currently there will be there within minutes. We've got Sarah's Twitter. We've got the this cool overview video about Project 15. There's also the one we've referred to throughout this uh, chat as the second video is how to be a hero. And Sarah uh, gave you the URL earlier. We put that in the description too. Project 15, official um, documentation. Click the button. Beautiful. Uh, they've got developer guides. They've got the architecture overview. Sarah's got a couple of really cool blog posts about uh, updates from Project 15 last year, applying graph theory. Sustainability. This is so interesting. I, I'm more active on LinkedIn than I am on Twitter, to be honest. Clearly. So feel free well, to you're, connect to me. You're publishing some really like in-depth media stuff. So it definitely seems like more friendly to that platform. <laughs> We've got Club 15 from Kids Can Save Animals, who's interviewed Sarah and Adam and Yoko. Um, and uh, then also these other organizations you mentioned. We've got Trail Guard. Um, stocking poachers, etc. Wild Labs, uh, the UN Small Grants Project, so cool. And come join us for the Impact Summit. Uh, it's next week. <laughs> I'm kind of like running around like a chicken with my head cut off this <laughs> week, just to be like, ah, you know, uh, all kinds of cool stuff. Um, check out our past contest for cool stuff. This one is just about to uh, close tonight. And yeah, join us for the Impact Summit. Sarah's going to join us. It's going to be amazing. It's fun. Isn't you guys, it? you guys so cool. do so much great stuff. And I, you know, thank you for having me. I, you know, I feel sometimes, I don't know. I'm just one small person trying to like do some That's stuff and my friends, like, it's just like, we're just, we have a club and we just like hang out and try to figure out how to do stuff. And I love it. And that's, you know, your whole, uh, thing at Hackster is just like, let's do stuff. And I don't, that's not your official tagline, I know, but, um, <laughs> but, uh, I like but yeah, it I love it. Thank you so much for, for having me here. And, and, um, I'm usually like, do, 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 here's my talk, blah, blah, blah. And it's just uh, <laughs> off script. Um, so anyway, thank you so With much. With bonus cats, honestly, do you usually oh. get, uh, do people usually get cats during your talks? Oh, all the time. Uh, the dog, oh, good. I have the gate, the little baby gate, so the dog doesn't bust in, which is what Peter is talking <laughs> about. And she'll like sit behind here and just hang out. And I'm like, oh, okay. Okay, I'm going to be honest. I kind of hope that the dog comes in during your keynote. But I, for your sake, I hope not, because I know that you'll be, you know, uh, trying to focus. But that would be amazing. For anyone uh, watching, I'll leave the door open just in case we can have an a Addison busts in, you know, moment. <laughs> Great. So like for that Kramer. reason, everyone come join us for the Impact Summit next week. And thank you so much, Sarah, for joining us. Uh, this is really, uh, I just love what you're doing. And it's such a pleasure to be able to highlight that for our community. Speaking of which, thank you everyone for joining us and have an awesome rest of your week. Bye.